In today's lesson, we are going to discuss Kirchhoff's laws, that is the Kirchhoff's current law and then the Kirchhoff's voltage law. And we are going to deploy them in solving a number of circuit problems. So let's start off with Kirchhoff's current law. So Kirchhoff's current law states that the algebraic sum of current entering a node is zero. The algebraic sum of current entering a node is zero. Now we can demonstrate this by considering this network. So here we have five different currents, either entering or leaving the node. This happens to be the node. We have five different currents, either entering or leaving the node. Now to clearly understand this concept, KCL or Kirchhoff's current law is saying that the algebraic sum of all these currents should be equal to zero. We are going to consider currents entering the node to have a positive value and then currents leaving the node to have negative values. So let's start off with I1. Now we have I1 entering the node, so that is a positive value. So I1 plus I2 is leaving, so negative I2 plus I3 is entering, so positive I3. I4 is also entering, so we have positive I4. I5 is leaving, so negative I5. And then the sum or the algebraic sum of all these terms should be equal to zero. Now let's try to rearrange the terms in this equation so that we have those with negatives being transposed to the right hand side. So we are left with I1 plus I3 plus I4 on the left hand side and that is equal to I2 plus I5. Now, if you look critically at what we have on the left hand side, you realize that it is the sum of currents entering the junction or the node. It is the sum of currents entering the node. We have I1, we have I3 and then I4. So what we have on the left hand side is the sum of currents entering the node entering the node and then on the right hand side we have the sum of currents leaving the node so sum of currents leaving leaving the node now this gives rise to an alternative way of saying kcl that is the sum of currents entering a node is equal to the sum of currents leaving the node. And that is exactly what we have here. We have I1 plus I3 plus I4. That is the sum of currents entering the node equal to I2 plus I5, which is the sum of currents leaving the node. So basically, this is how to demonstrate KCL using this network. Now let's move on to KVL, that is Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now, Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the algebraic sum of all voltages around a closed path or a loop is zero. The algebraic sum of all voltages around a closed path or a loop is zero. Now, to demonstrate this, we are going to consider this circuit. And then, we are going to take the clockwise direction. Now, in doing this, we are going to consider the voltages around the loop. The voltages around the loop. Now, like we did for the current, for the voltages also, whenever we have a current leaving the positive terminal, then the voltage component is also positive. If we have current leaving the negative terminal, then the voltage component is also negative. So now, going around the loop in the clockwise direction, so for V1, we have current leaving the positive terminal. So that's going to have a positive voltage component. So we have V1 plus for V2, we have the current leaving the negative terminal. So V2 becomes negative. So minus V2 plus the same happens to V3. The current leaves the negative terminal. And so we have negative V3 plus 
current leaves the positive terminal so we have positive v4 and then lastly we have current leaving the negative terminal and so we have a negative value for v5 so plus negative v5 and then according to kvl the algebraic sum of all the components we have here should be equal to zero now let's try to rearrange the terms so we transpose all negatives to the right hand side so we have v1 plus v4 and that should be equal to v2 plus v3 plus v5 now the sum of v1 and then v4 represents the source voltages or the sum of the source voltages so sum of the source voltages and then what we have on the right hand side also represents the sum of the voltage drops or the sum of the voltages dropped dropped across the circuit so the sum of the voltages dropped across the circuit now you realize that this gives rise to an alternative way of saying kvl that is the sum of source voltages is equal to the sum of voltage drops so the sum of source voltages which are v1 plus v4 is equal to the sum of the voltages dropped across the circuit so that's v2 plus v3 plus v5 so basically this is how to demonstrate how kcl and then kvl works now in the next section we are going to deploy them in solving a number of circuit problems so let's take our first question we are going to find the voltages v1 and v2 in the circuit below so we are going to find the voltages v1 and then v2 in this circuit now to solve this problem first of all we are going to consider kvl so according to kvl we know that the sum of all the voltages around the loop should be equal to zero the algebraic sum of all the voltages around the loop should be equal to zero now we are going to take the clockwise direction so using kvl using kvl and then considering the voltages around the loop now we said that when the current leaves the positive terminal then we are going to have a positive voltage component when it leaves the negative terminal then we have a negative voltage component now for the 10 volts we have the current leaving the positive terminal so we have positive 10 plus here we have current leaving the negative terminal so that becomes negative v1 here also current is leaving the positive terminal so that becomes a positive value so plus 8 and then here also current is leaving the positive terminal so that becomes plus v2 so the sum of all these terms should be equal to zero now let's try to simplify this so we have 10 plus 8 which is 18 and then minus v1 plus v2 so we transpose negative v1 and then v2 to the right hand side so that we have 18 equals v1 minus v2 now let's call this equation 1 now using ohm's law we can develop an expression for both v1 and then v2 so from ohm's law we have v1 to be equal to now we are going to consider the voltage that is dropped across these four ohms so since the current is moving in this direction and then leaving the negative terminal we have the current to be negative now let's assign current say i so this current is flowing through all elements in the circuit in the clockwise direction so if we have current i flowing through the four ohms resistor the current is going to leave the negative terminal which means that we are going to have a negative value for v1 so v1 is going to be i times the value of the resistor which is 4 
so that is going to be for i and then for v2 we are taking the clockwise direction so this time current leaves the positive terminal so i is going to be positive sorry so for v1 because the current is leaving the negative terminal it's supposed to be negative so we have negative i times 4 which is equal to negative 4i and then for v2 current leaves the positive terminal so that's going to be a positive current times the value of the resistor which is 2 so we have 2i so v1 is negative 4i v2 is 2i now we are going to substitute v1 and v2 back into equation 1 so putting putting v1 and v2 into equation 1 into equation 1 we have 18 equals v1 is negative 4i minus v2 is 2i and that gives negative 6i so we divide through by negative 6 by negative 6 and then we have i to be equal to negative 3 so i is equal to negative 3 amperes so actually what this primarily means is that the current is rather taking this direction is flowing in that direction the opposite direction now since we are asked to find the values of v1 and v2 we have v1 to be equal to negative 4i and that is equal to negative 4 times negative 3 and we have that to be 12 volts so that is the value of v1 and then for v2 that is 2i so we have 2 times negative 3 and that is equal to negative 6 so this is also the value for v2 so these are the values for v1 and then v2 respectively now let's move on to the second question so in the second question we are also asked to find the voltages vx and then v naught in the circuit below like we used or the approach we used in the first example that is exactly what we are going to do also in this example so we are also going to use kvl so using using kvl we are saying that the sum of all the voltages around the loop should be equal to zero the algebraic sum of all the voltages around the loop should be equal to zero we are also going to take the clockwise direction and then we assign current i flowing in all elements in the circuit so starting from this 35 volt source we have the current leaving the positive terminal so that is a positive value 35 plus we have current entering this resistor and then leaving the negative terminal so we have this going to be a negative value for vx so plus negative vx plus we also have current leaving the negative terminal of 2vx hence that's going to be a negative value so negative 2vx and then we have current leaving the positive terminal of v naught so that becomes a positive value v naught and then the whole of what we have on the left hand side should be equal to zero according to kvl so let's simplify so we have 35 minus vx minus 2 vx plus v naught equals zero we can do something about this so we have 35 minus 3 vx plus v naught equals zero let's call this equation one now you realize that we can develop expressions for vx and then v naught so using ohm's law for vx for vx we have the current entering the positive terminal and then le leaving the negative terminal so since current is leaving the negative terminal there is going to be a negative value so we have negative i times the value of the resistor which is 10 so vx is equal to negative 10i so also for v naught 
current is leaving the positive term now so that's going to be a positive value so positive i times value of resistor which is 5 so that is equal to 5i now let's substitute v0 and then vx into equation 1 so from equation 1 from equation 1 we have 35 minus 3 times vx which is negative 10i plus v0 which is 5i equals 0 so we simplify this and we have 35 plus 30i plus 5i equals 0 now when we add 30 to 5 we have 35 so that becomes that becomes 35 plus 35i equals 0 we transpose this to the right hand side 35 equals negative 35i we divide through by negative 35 negative 35 and then we have i to be equal to negative 1 ampere so that is the value of i now let's substitute i into vx and then v naught so for vx we have negative 10 i so that will be equal to negative 10 times negative 1 and that is equal to 10 volts for v naught we have 5 i so that will be equal to 5 times negative 1 and that is negative 5 volts